a night barely remembered is now seared forever into Jennifer's memory. For her protection, we've concealed her identity. They offered me a drink, um, and before I knew it, I basically just had a flash of just being in somebody's bedroom. Jennifer's story brings to light a disturbing loophole in New York's sexual assault consent laws. People don't even know that it's a loophole, that, there, that this exists in the law. Jennifer went to a popular New York City nightclub during her freshman year at FIT in 2014. She became separated from her friends and accepted a drink from a man at the bar. That's the last thing she remembers. I had no idea who the person was. Um, I completely blocked out. Um, I didn't remember like what he looked like or how he got home. Jennifer woke up in a stranger's bed and went home in an Uber she didn't order. But she knew she had been raped. She went to the hospital for a rape kit and tried to press charges, but she said the law let her down. The fact that I was intoxicated made it, you know, um, just invalidated the whole situation. According to New York state law, a person cannot consent because of, quote, a narcotic or intoxicating substance administered to him without his consent, such as slipping a pill in someone's drink. But if someone chooses to drink and doesn't remember what happened, he or she is still considered capable of consenting in the eyes of the law. The only exception to that law is if the person is unconscious or in some way physically helpless. It's outrageous and we're going to try to change that. Bronx legislator Jeff Dinowitz introduced a bill into the state assembly that would close that loophole and says he will push for it to pass in 2020. Another Bronx legislator, Alessandra Biagi, introduced the same bill in the Senate. Governor Cuomo has also voiced his support. If somebody is intoxicated, that's not a green light to, ins uh, to assault somebody. Whether or not that intoxication was voluntary or involuntary, it shouldn't make a difference. Karen Friedman Agnifilo at the Manhattan DA's office says often they cannot prosecute cases because of the loophole. It's very hard to sit with them, have them go through all of that, and then have to look them in the eye and tell them, I'm really sorry, I can't prosecute your case because the law doesn't say what happened to you is a crime. It may not be considered a crime, but survivors are still shackled with lifelong trauma while the alleged perpetrator remains free. This person could easily be, you know, regular at the clubs doing this with whatever girl is there. Lawmakers say that closing the loophole could help countless women and men across New York to seek justice. So stories like Jennifer's have a different ending. This just can't stay the way that it is. I'm Katie Corrado, PIX11 News.